Today we're going to look at a bunch of running backs for fantasy football. We're going to cover their player values, the advanced metrics, and everything else. Whether or not you should be drafting them. Covering the recent news. Yesterday we did the same thing with the wide receivers. Soon in a few days we'll be ranking the running backs, like the top 50 or so. So you want to stick around for that. So you're going to need to click that subscribe button. We're talking about these players every day. We're talking about the player pools, the wide receivers, the running backs tight ends quarterbacks we're talking draft strategy we're helping you win your drafts and win your leagues we talk waiver wire every day in season this is the deepest channel probably deeper than any website even talking about the waiver wire in season possibilities strategies and everything else not just the waiver wire but we also talk about the injuries guys sitting on the injury report that you pick up for cheap stuff like that to help you get those edges in your league click that button stop missing out we win a lot of people leagues here but we're going to start off with gus edwards he is a very dependable running back going in double digit rounds he's one of the last dependable running backs in the draft before you start looking at those backup running backs and upside plays so if you're hitting the double digit rounds and you need a dependable running back that's going to get touches between the tackles some opportunity gus edwards is the guy to look at jk dobbins is cheap is a good hedge i look at him as an upside play and what i like about jk dobbins is that i'm going to know very quick whether he's in or out whether he's good for fantasy or not and if he's not i'm going to turn and burn him and play the waiver wire I want players in round 14 that I know who are good or bad within three weeks, four weeks. So I can turn them off my team, get another player. So I can really see what's going on. I will know from the touches. I will know from the targets. J.K. Dobbins, if he's back to health, if he's 90%, 85% of what he was prior to the injuries, then I'm okay. Then I'm okay. Then if he's not, I'm playing waiver wire. Round 14, you're looking for upside players. We're going to talk about a lot of those players today. We'll talk about a lot of those players down the road. J.K. Dobbins is one of those. I'm not going to plant a flag on him. J.K. Dobbins, though, is a guy you're just pulling straws on in the back of your draft, along with a lot of these other running backs like Ray Davis, Chuba Hubbard, Jalen Wright. We all got our preferences, and I like some of those running backs as well. Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell, the name makes me smile. If he's hurt, he's not on the field. And if he starts the season on injured reserve, guess what? You can stash him on your IR spot. If you have enough IR spots to stash him, hold on to him. Rasheen Ali has not been looking good, at least recently. And Derrick Henry's going to hold it down. But if something happens to Derrick Henry, guess what? They're going to have to go back to these running backs. They're saying that Keaton Mitchell should be back sometime middle of the season. That is a good indicator to me. That he's probably going to start off on injured reserve or the pup. Pay attention to that. If you can make room and stash him, then you got a free player. We also know he's got some upside. We saw it last year. He's got speed to burn. We're going to be talking about him again as an injured reserve stash going forward. Miles Sanders. He's not draftable. No one's drafting him on Underdog Fantasy. Very few people are. He has an ADP of 215. RB74 off the board. So you're not planning a flag on him. But Jonathan Brooks might start off slow due to him coming back from that knee injury. Chuba Hubbard should be getting the touches, but Miles Sanders is free. This is letting us know that he's going to be on waivers. Pay attention to him. Pay attention to his touches. If you get hurt at the running back position, maybe he's a guy to pick up. But he's free. He is a free player that gave you a little bit of production. Look from weeks 12 to 18 last year. Double digits. We're not expecting him to win your league. We're expecting him to try and get you by if he's on the field. The thing is, when I look at him in training camp, he still has some pop in his step. He's still getting some opportunities. Jonathan Brooks might start off slow, maybe not getting touches at all. Pay attention to him. Miles Sanders might be getting a little bit of work, and he's got enough spring in his step to exceed expectations of an ADP of 215. Trey Benson. I want him on a lot of teams. I can't say all of my teams because that's not rational, but Trey Benson has the size of just the athleticism to make it happen. They're cooking at the wide receiver department. Marvin Harrison Jr., of course. Greg Dortch is looking good this training camp. Michael Wilson's looking good. James Conner, I love him. Nothing bad against him, but running backs get hurt. He's the next man up. If that happens, Trey Benson 
is going to be a hot commodity. If you have him stashed, he's kind of an expensive stash at round 10 draft capital, but he's going in the range where you're speculating. There are some safer running backs where you know who's going to get production week one, but if you're looking for that league winning play, Trey Benson could be that. He's got 4-3 speed. He's got pop. He got drafted on day two. So everything's looking his way. He's in an offense that could propel him. Another player to look at, Isaiah Pacheco is one of my favorite top running backs. He's a little cheaper. He's in an explosive offense. He gets the workload. He gets a little bit of run in the passing game. Three and a half targets per game. Round four is draft capital. Probably more like round three in your home league. Maybe even pushing round two if things get really hot in your league. That being said, he's safer. He's a little cheaper. And he has some upside. He can get you damn near 30 points in a game. 25-ish in some weeks. High-end RB2 in a lot of weeks. But six RB1 weeks last year. Up there among the top running backs. Joe Mixon, I like him a lot. I like him with the Texans. I like that he's cheap. I like that I can catch him a few rounds cheaper. I can stack up at wide receiver and I can get a stud running back and a stud offense who's going to get a stud workload. And I'm good at wide receiver. I'm good at running back and I'm good to go. I look for him to get the same amount of opportunity to share here with the Texans as he did with the Cincinnati Bengals. They're going to look to use him. He's going to be using the passing game. This is a great addition. Running backs get hurt often. And if I can get a good running back getting good opportunity, at a cheaper cost round six here on underdog more like round five round four in your traditional league at home i will take that i will take the discount just in case the worst happens guess what i don't have much sunk cost invested in him alvin kamara i love him as my rb2 if i'm going zero rb he's one of my targets as my number one running back since i'm stashed at wide receiver i look for him to be one of the top targeted running backs in the league this year i look for him to keep on keeping on like we're seeing down here in the chart below but eventually father time's gonna win but at round seven draft capital in the middle rounds i can dance with that khalil herbert round 16 draft capital a forgotten asset but a guy with good speed and athleticism proven the pop off with production playing behind deandre swift who's had fancied injuries throughout his career especially with detroit something to take note of for throughout the season might be a guy you're picking up off waivers later on down the road. Jalen Wright is the supreme upside play. He's rising up draft boards, has 4-3 speed, has size. The running backs in front of him, they get hurt off and on. And it looks like he's going to be getting some opportunity. Could be week 3, week 9. But he is the supreme lottery play. He's with the Dolphins, a fast-paced offense. They had a rookie pop off last year. Why can't another rookie pop off this year? We got speed to burn. The whole team is speed. He fits well with this team. He is dirt cheap. He's a guy that you can throw a lottery ticket at. Kyron Williams, RB8 in drafts right now, but cheap with round three draft capital. Considering the production we saw last year, Blake Corum's there. Blake Corum is NFL ready, but Kyron Williams is going to get the bulk of the touches. Until they say no, until his body can't hold up anymore, and then Blake Corn will get his opportunity. And that's with every running back. That is with every running back in the National Football League. I'm not really worried about him. I think he's going to get a lot of workload. Maybe instead of pushing 30 opportunities in a game, it could scale back to like 25 or 20 or so, which is still top tier opportunity. He's using the passing game, he's very reliable. They like him a lot. They're going to keep using him. Instead of 19 rushes a game, maybe it's like 16, 15 or something like that, which is still very good. Maybe he pushes like 18 points a game, maybe 16, maybe somewhere around there, but he's going to be reliable. He's a little cheaper than what's forecasted from last year. We got Blake Corum breathing down his neck, but a lot of these running backs, they're kind of in the same situation. If something happens, they're going to go down. The next guy's going to come up. Blake Corum, though, I like him a lot. One of the few NFL-ready running backs in this year's draft. Again, if something happens to Kyron Williams, he's going to go off. He's going to be a trendy asset. A guy you're going to wish you had stashed. He is a big-time stash play. And with Kyron Williams there, I see him getting probably about eight touches a game. Maybe something like that, getting some opportunity. They're going to try or talk about scaling him back. 
We're going to get in games like they did last year after they talked about scaling them back. And next thing you know, Kyron Williams is getting way too many touches for him. And then something's going to happen. Blake Corum is good between the tackles, productive at Michigan. Look at him two years ago before the knee injury, one of the most productive running backs in college football. He's NFL ready, like Kyron Williams, very dependable in all phases. That's not a comparison, but they're both very dependable players. Blake Corum is a stash play, and that's a guy I want as a lottery ticket. Tony Pollard, round nine. If you want a cheap, dependable player who's got some upside but some downside too because we got Tajay Spears there who could take too much of the workload, preventing him from hitting his cap in production, but still should get you double-digit points per game. Round nine draft capital is very cheap for that. So if you're looking for like an RB3 that you can plug and play with, play the matchups with, or if you want here RB, zero RB, and you're going late with the running back and you want something kind of dependable, a veteran that you know is going to be on the field, Tony Pollard could be a guy you're looking at. Aaron Jones is a guy I'm going after. He's a guy I'm going after as my RB2. Or if I'm going zero here RB, well here RB would be an RB2, but zero RB, one of those top running backs. In that range, round seven, late round six, him and Kamara are my main targets. I recognize the other running backs. David Montgomery is a good target as well, now that I'm looking at it when it's right in front of my face. I look for these guys to jump up the draft board a little bit. After the recent Jameer Gibbs news, I look for David Montgomery to jump up a couple rounds due to him facing some RB1 workload coming his way early in the season, possibly, at least potentially, and people FOMOing over that. Najee Harris sharing the backfield. I like him, but my main two targets here in the middle round, sixth, seventh round-ish. I'm not letting him fall farther than that. Alvin Kamara and Aaron Jones. I like their workload. I like that they're going to be catching passes out of the backfield. The quarterback situation, I'm not too worried about because I'm paying round seven, round six, late round six draft capital for him. So he's going to be cheap. If anything, he's going to get a little bit more workload than realized. But Justin Jefferson's still there. They can't stack the box or he's going to go off. Aaron Jones, a cheap RB2 in the making who I know is going to get the workload. David Montgomery, I think the price is going up due to the Jameer Gibbs news. We'll watch ADP for that. But he can get the touches. He can get you the workload. can give you a good baseline production. See that in the back half of the season. Still getting you double digits per game. You're catching them in the middle of the rounds there. If you want something like that, that's straight steady. That can also give you a few RB1 weeks throughout the season. David Montgomery could be a guy to shoot for. Zamir White's going to get touches. He's going to get workload. After Jones and Kamara comes off the board, I'm looking Zamir White in those rounds. So if I'm anchored down with a good running back in the start of my draft, I'm probably waiting to around this range and trying to get two of those backs, maybe one if I'm lucky, and really be hammered out at wide receiver. That would be my strategy here. But I look for him to get a lot of workload during the last four weeks of the season, top five in opportunity. I look for him to at least get a lot of touches. And I'm drafting touches here in the middle of the rounds and hoping for the best. That's what I'm really doing. And there's not many running backs behind him in the draft that's forecasting to get this much opportunity share and I'll take it if he's not catching passes out of backfield if he's still getting two or less targets per game I'm okay with it due to the opportunity share still being top five top ten in the league among running backs also goal line looks should increase because he's going to have more opportunities due to him being on the field more and due to him not getting many opportunities in the back end of the season that being said RB23 round 8. I'm good with that. Kenneth Walker, a lot of people talking him up as of late. Zach Charbonnet was stiff the other day in practice, did not practice, could be out still. A lot of people are talking about Kenneth Walker due to that. From what I see from these running backs, they take turns with little injuries, missing games and time here and there. And that's what this backfield is about. You can look at it in two ways. You're looking at a 4-3 running back with speed and pop going in the middle rounds here that you can draft because you feel good about it. You can get Zach Charbonnet in double-digit rounds a lot cheaper who catches balls out of the backfield. who will get his run this season some opportunity at a cheaper cost. You can get them both as well if you really want to do that. They're spread out enough where you can get the handcuff if you really want to. If you want to, I also catch myself going the last of the Mohicans at wide receiver in this area, so I'm not catching myself with a lot of Kenneth Walker. I will have some shares, but not too many. 
But when I look at Kenneth Walker, he's one of those guys in the middle rounds who will give you some top-end performances, but it's also capped out when it comes to his consistency due to Zach Charbonnet. Also, these running backs have a history of taking turns, getting injured. It's a small history, although it's just one year, but we're already starting to see it this year. Devin Singletary, going to get a lot of run in this offense. Tyrone Tracy went down. Eric Gray's next in line. Devin Singletary's cheap. You're drafting touches here and hoping for the best. This is all on Danny Dimes and Malik Neighbors. If those two connect, and if those two are looking good, we're going to see other players in the offense pop off from time to time, giving you some good performances. A guy that can steal some production from that is Singletary. Do the offense moving a little better. If that happens, but he's still going to be on the field because he's very dependable, good in pass protection, good catching the ball in the backfield, good between the tackles, very dependable running back. They wanted a cheap, dependable running back. They got that with Singletary. He's going to be used at least early in the season. Jonathan Brooks, amazing upside play. Very expensive upside play, but he's a guy that could come in somewhere down the line during the season. And if this offense is cooking, they made upgrades to the offensive line. Totally new coaching staff. New pass catchers, Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett. This is a totally different offense. This guy's got burst, speed, wiggle. Can create yards after contact. Round 8 draft capital. Expensive price to pay, but he could be a guy that could win your league. Austin Eckler. He is a play that you're throwing a lottery ticket at. Double digit rounds is where he's going. The thing is, what if he's not dust? He reverts back to his old self. And next thing you know, you got a top end running back on the cheap. What if that doesn't hit? Then you're throwing away an RB40 off your team playing the waiver wire up and down for the rest of the season. There's really not much to lose here where he's going and he's got plenty of upside. He's also shown you that upside before. He even did it last year. What if it was just injuries playing in, he was playing nicked up and he was just getting by. Now we got Jay Daniels. We're moving the ball a little differently, different quarterback play. What if we're catching five targets a game still? What if we're still getting that workload in the passing game? Maybe instead of getting Austin Eckler production, we scale it back to like 85% of that. What if it is 13 points per game? 13 points per game, round 11 draft capital. You're paying what you get down here below. I would take that in round 11 if I want some dependability with upside. I would definitely take that. And if he's not dust and he's back to his old form, you're winning your league. You're winning your league. It's an upside play. Swing for the fence and you have to in these double digit rounds. Kendra Miller is falling. He hasn't been on the practice field since mid late July due to a hamstring issue. He's falling. He was going in round 10. Now it's round 17. He's barely draftable, but he's a guy you got to pay attention to. One, you got to make sure he's still on the Saints come draft day and in season. And two, you got to pay attention to when he's healthy. If he starts the season on injured reserve, he's a stash for your injured reserve because they're saying, hey, we're not cutting this guy. We're going to save him. He's got some speed. He's got some pop. If by default due to injuries, he has to be the guy, he does have some upside in those regards. And he could be a guy you want to pluck off waivers. And if he's on injured or reserve to start the season, you already got him on a free square. You already got him. You had to drop a guy to pick him up or you draft him with your last pick to see what could happen and picked up another guy off waivers, giving you an extra pick in your draft on the back end of your draft. Pay attention to Kendra Miller. I'm not saying you must get him. I'm saying pay attention to him. Dylan Labe catches balls out of the backfield. He's explosive. If they're checking it down the running backs, if something happens to Zemir White, he could get you some fantasy production. Very good for PPR. You're probably going to look at him off waivers. You're not drafting him off. But those are the running backs we are looking at today. Some of these guys got upside. Some of these guys were baking strategy around. Some of these guys were looking to pick up off waivers later on down the road. But we got to talk about these running backs. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on next video.